in a world that suppresses emotion, su express your emotion. And you will be so powerful. You will be so alive. It's our aliveness. We are sensational beings. We have to allow ourselves to be sensational. Welcome to the Ecstatic Woman Podcast. Together, along with some amazing guests, we'll explore and tap into our inner wisdom and have meaningful conversations about developing our ability to self-discover, create, and be present in the world, while also uncovering new ways to think, feel, and cultivate our sense of empowerment so we can live our lives ecstatically. Now let's welcome our host. Hello, hello, Marcy. and welcome to another episode of the Ecstatic Woman Podcast, where we activate and inspire women in their power and their authenticity and in their bliss. I'm your host, Alara Sage. I am a womb shaman, activator and facilitator of Kundalini Shakti. <laughs> And I am the ecstatic life mentor. So we all want to live ecstatically. And this is a solo episode where I get to be just with you, the audience. And we get to do a deep dive into a topic. Today, I feel the topic of emotions. And, you know, I feel like in humanity, Emotions get a really bad rap. Largely because there's a lot of emotions that we don't want to feel. And, well, perhaps you've heard the saying, what you resist persists. And I would say that's true with emotions. Regardless of whether you resist emotions or not, regardless of whether you find yourself being okay with some emotions and not with others. The truth is that for one, our emotions are a guidance system. Our emotions guide us to understand, to see, to have awareness of beliefs that we are holding on to, beliefs that are creating our reality, and beliefs that we are experiencing in the moment that are then eliciting an emotional reaction. Also, the thing about emotions is it is ultimately through emotion in the human experience that we also get to experience joy, bliss, ecstasy. However, when we resist certain emotions, we are disconnecting ourselves. We are fragmenting ourselves. We are saying the version of us that is experiencing the sadness or the grief or the depression or the shame or the anger, or the rage is somehow not okay, not allowed, not accepted, not received. And therefore, when you resist your emotions, you actually... Don't allow yourself your own personal wholeness. You don't allow yourself to experience yourself as divinity. So our emotions are a guidance system. Let's start there. Our emotions are a chemical reaction to what we are experiencing. And our experience is based off of our perception. And our perception is based off our beliefs. Our emotions are pointing to what we believe about the experience. Now, this can be powerful, transformative, very insightful and informative if you allow it. 
However, if you either do not allow yourself to feel the emotion, to experience the emotion, to understand the emotion and thus the belief that it's pointing to, or you get lost in the emotion, in the sensationalness, that's a word, sensationalness. Otherwise, I made it up. Sounds pretty good to me sensationalness of the emotion if you get lost in that you also do not see the limiting belief so either way either rejecting an emotion or becoming so immersed in the emotion that you identify with it will not allow you to see the belief structure. If you are willing to feel the emotion and simultaneously not identify with the emotion, then you can be curious. You can feel and experience emotion and really ask yourself, particularly if it's an emotion you don't want to experience, like anger, grief. I mean, grief is really okay to experience. I mean, all of it's okay to experience. Don't get me wrong, but uh, anger, sadness, depression, right? Any of those shame, anxiety, fear. Then you can ask, what am I believing in this moment? What am I believing about this experience that is eliciting this emotion? So an example would be, you know, you get a letter in the mail and that letter says, hey, guess what? Congratulations. You owe the IRS $7,000. And you have all of a sudden a contraction. Perhaps your gut collapses. Perhaps you even receive shortness of breath. Maybe you get angry. All of those are emotional chemical reactions to the belief that you have about receiving that letter from the IRS. Now, conversely, you receive a different letter. It's an interesting day, this, this day where this is occurring. The next letter you open up says, hey, congratulations, way to go. You just won $20,000. Wow, happiness, elation, joy, surprise, celebration. Same thing. A chemical reaction elicited points to what you believe about that experience. That's it. That is the emotional guidance system. And it's very, very beautiful. Because your emotions, excuse me, because your limiting beliefs, the limiting beliefs, the beliefs that say to you that you are not divinity, that you are disconnected, separate from source, separate from God, because that is the core limiting belief of humanity. Those are the ones that we want to realize. We want to connect to. We want to see those beliefs and all the different ways that we've constructed belief upon belief upon belief around that core belief that we are separate from divinity. Because whether you're aware of them or not, they are vibrationally in your field. They are vibrationally in your subconscious mind. And they are contributing to you creating your reality. So if you are always creating the same thing, it's very easy to see the limiting beliefs that are creating that. And some of the best ways to use our emotional guidance system is in our relationship with others, because oftentimes other people will say something to us that trigger us. Our first reaction is to blame that other person because they triggered us. They, quote unquote, made us feel. Isn't that a great sentence? Made us feel. 
The truth is, nobody can make you feel anything. You are feeling something because of a wound or a limiting belief that you have about yourself that that person just poked. Don't give them the power. You're the one with the power. You're the one with the power because it's your belief. It's your emotion. It's your feeling. Don't give that away to somebody else. Take responsibility for that. Wow, that person said something to me that really made me angry. Why? Why am I so angry about what that person said? It's even more interesting, is it not? When the person said something that had nothing to do with you, maybe they spoke about a political party. <laughs> maybe they said something religious, right? Because politics and religion seem to be sensational. <laughs> in the human experience. Sensational topics. They cause great sensation in our bodies. Isn't that interesting? Politics and religion trigger people. So if somebody says something politically or religiously, or maybe they see something about somebody else, Basically anything, right, that they're not saying it, hey, you are, or you this, or it's not directed at you. It's even more curious, is it not? Huh, that person said something about that political party that made me angry. Why? What belief structure am I carrying that gives that person power? Click my wound when they're discussing something that isn't even me. The emotional guidance system is always pointing us to those. But the truth is, humans don't want to feel. And this is a really big issue. Humans want to be numb. They want to be disconnected. They want to be, be distracted. distracted. They are so scared to feel. And thus, they're constantly giving their power away to everybody around them. That made me feel, and that made me feel, and that caused this, and that caused that. And therefore, they are powerless. All because they believe that an emotion is who they are. So let me explain. A lot of people don't like to feel anger. It's one of those emotions I've noticed that people don't like it in their bodies and they don't like it around them. Calm down, stop, you're becoming angry. That's not okay. Angry is such a, del anger is such a delicious emotion in my opinion. I mean, we don't want to be angry at each other and aggressive towards each other, but anger, ah, it creates revolution. It is the point of going from what's the word? It's not empathy, apathy. That's it. Apathy to action. Apathy to action, anger. It's beautiful. It's such a potent and powerful emotion when we know how to feel it in our bodies and how to channel it into action because anger will do that. Have you ever noticed? You ever felt angry and you just have to go and do something, right? Like clean the house or go for a jog or oh, you just have to do something. It's a great energizer. But people don't want to feel it and they don't want anybody being angry around them because it's very spiky and people fear that they will lose control of themselves and people don't want to be seen as angry. So that's the kicker right there. If I'm angry, that means I'm an angry person. If I'm sad, that means I'm a sad person. If I'm 
shameful. It means I'm a, if I feel shame, I'm ashamed. It means I'm shameful. And that's not true. Guess what? You're human and you actually have all of the emotions, my love. You have it all. You're all of it and you're none of it simultaneously. And that's really beautiful because you don't have to identify with any of it. And that gives you the opportunity to breathe into your body and feel it and be like, ah, there is that anger. There is that shame. There is that sadness. Wow. That emotion is so beautiful. Sadness is so, oh, it's like heavy water. It's like a, it's like a day where there's a torrential downpour. I know that's sadness. Fire is like this, or uh, anger is like this fire. Shame is like this. Shame feels like you want to bury yourself. Depression feels like a weighted blanket. Right? That's it. They are sensations. They are literally chemical reactions in your body. That is it. That would be like similar to saying that you are your adrenaline, you are your cortisol, you are your estrogen, you are your testosterone. You're not any of those. So why do we think we're our emotions? I read one where one place that it said that the Irish have a, a saying that says, you know, sadness is upon me rather than I am sad. I don't know if that's true or not, but I love it. We can also say I'm feeling sad because that's absolutely true. I am feeling sad. I am feeling angry. But that's not what our language usually says. We usually say I am sad. I am anger, angry. And regardless of what we say, that is usually what people do. So when they feel an emotion, they don't move it through their body. They just sit in it. And that doesn't feel good. I, I will 100% back up the truth that that does not feel good to just sit in an emotion. It's like you're marinating in the vibration of it. You're marinating your body like a steak in lemon juice. However, if you know how to use your breath and breathe into your body, breathe completely and breathe fully, breathe deeply, you can move the emotion through your body. And then you don't feel it anymore. And you can ask, what was that attempting to show me or teach me? The more that you can feel emotion, the more power you can hold. The more that you can feel your emotion and feel other people's emotion, the more grounded and anchored you can be in yourself and in the energy of presence. Presence requires you to be fully embodied in your body. And what oftentimes happens is we are triggered in our emotions from a limiting belief and or we feel somebody else's emotions. And sometimes that's even harder for people because, hey, if that person's angry, I feel out of control because I can't do anything about it. The other person is angry. We don't want to feel their anger in our bodies. But the truth is, humans are deeply empathic. All humans. We are empathic beings, just like animals. Now, many humans have shut that down. They have numbed their empathic abilities because they don't know what to do with their emotions. They don't know how to handle the sensations. And so they've said, I don't know what to do with that. That's not safe. I'm going to shut it down. 
but all humans are deeply, deeply empathic. So then when you shut down, it doesn't matter. You know, you can tell yourself, <laughs> I'm only going to shut down uh, my anger receptors. <laughs> I'm only going to shut down my shame receptors. I'm going to make space to feel happiness and joy. The truth is, is you won't. Emotions are vibrationally the same spectrum. And your capacity to feel the lower vibratory emotions will grant you an equal capacity to feel the higher vibratory emotions. Okay. So lower doesn't mean bad and higher doesn't mean good. It's literally a wavelength. Lower wavelength, almost like a straighter wavelength. Then a higher wavelength is, you know, a more intense mountain image. I think you know what I'm saying. If you can't feel the lower vibratory emotions in your body and feel safe in those feelings and know how to relax into them, because you're not them, and they will move through your body, you won't feel the depth of joy, the depth of bliss, the depth of ecstasy. You won't feel those emotions deeply in your body. They will be superficial, surface level, because you've shut down your emotional body. Our emotional body is also our creativity, our creative life force energy. So if you are trying to conceive a baby, if you are trying to create something specific in your life, if you're trying to experience wealth and prosperity, guess what? That is also directly correlating to your emotional body and your availability to your emotions. This hasn't always been the case, as you can see by a lot of people in our society who have a lot of money who are not emotionally intelligent we have been living in a very mental paradigm very mental structure and that is out the door now already vibrationally out the door we are living in a very feminine matrix very feminine structure and the feminine is emotion the feminine is water and water shifts and changes form. It's solid. It's liquid. It's vapor. It's ice. Sleet. Snow. Hail. Something in between. So the more that you can have emotional intelligence, what are you feeling? What do the different vibrations of emotion feel like? What does shame feel like in your body? What does anxiety feel like in your body? What does anger? What does apathy? What does depression? What does sadness? What does joy? What is neutrality? What is love? What does courage, what does pride, what does bliss, what does jealousy feel like? The more that you can identify, a lot of people don't, I can't, they can't identify what they're feeling because again, they're not fully available to the feeling. They're kind of holding it at arm's length. It's like, I can't quite connect to it. I, there's something there, but since I'm not allowing it to come into my awareness fully, I'm holding it arm's length, even though it's in their body. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's in their body, but they are metaphorically holding it at arm's length saying, I can't really look at you. And therefore I can't actually see you because <laughs> I'm not really looking at you. Or I, I don't have you close enough that I can, you know, get a good look at you. So there's something there, but it's blurry. It's obscure. I'm not quite sure. What am I feeling? I don't know. 
If you find yourself saying that, uh, understand that I'm not making fun of you in any way, shape, or form. I like to joke and laugh, but we've all been there. I have absolutely been there. I have been numb. I used to believe that I was emotionally stable. I am emotionally stable, I thought to myself. And then I had a spontaneous kundalini awakening where the great mother Shakti shot through my body, out my crown. I went into full body orgasm, which I'd never experienced, hit ecstatic bliss. And then the next five months of my life was crazy, erotic, chaotic. As all of the emotions that I had stuffed down, numbed and said, just you don't need to be experienced. I don't need to look at you, came rip roaring out. And for five months, I was all over the place. One minute I would feel rage, the next minute I would be laughing ecstatically, the next minute I'd be crying on the floor in deep grief. To the point that I had to ask my higher self several times, am I going crazy? And my higher self said, no, breathe and allow the emotions to move through you. Higher selves are so funny because they, they don't often give like a great deal of information. It's like they just give just enough. <laughs> I didn't get an explanation of what was happening to me until after it happened. Because it wasn't about that. It was about letting the emotions that I had suppressed and numbed come out. What did it feel like? What did I experience? It was very intense. So please know that there is absolutely no judgment here. And through that, I have the experience. And through that, it wasn't like that was it. I was just totally open and everything was woohoo. No, I mean, I had a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. And the work that I've been taught is to relax, breathe, relax, breathe, allow, feel, be with it. What is it trying to show you, tell you? Love it. Love it. Love the emotion. Love the part of yourself that's holding the belief that's then eliciting the emotion. Love it. Love it. Love it. But emotional intelligence is about understanding what you're feeling. Being able to describe it, label it as an emotion. And then being able to pinpoint where in your body are you feeling that emotion? And what is that emotion or what is that part of your body telling you that you believe, again, about the circumstances, about that experience? So whenever you got triggered in the emotion, that would be the quote unquote snapshot of experience that you would want to then contemplate. You don't have to do it when you are triggered. You can do it afterwards. So let's say you're with your friend, Susie, and she says something and you're like, so triggered. but you're able to kind of just be with it and breathe through it and, and stay with her. In all honesty, I'm just going to call it out in all honesty. What we really want is friends that we can be like, whoa, Susie, you triggered me. Wow. Okay. I'm feeling this. And you guys can have a discussion about it and be really powerful because right then and there you can move through the emotion. Those are the friends that you want to have. Those are the people you want in your life. But not everybody has them. So let's pretend Susie doesn't even know what emotional intelligence is. And you know that if you started talking about that, she would take it personally. And what do you mean I triggered you? And, da, 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 and it would be this whole thing. So you just don't do it. Later on in the day, when you're at home, you can be like, okay, when Susie said, and you can repeat the sentence if you remember it, because it'll trigger your body. You can even say it out loud to yourself. And you can re-trigger yourself. And you can be like, great. There's that emotion again. Where is that in my body? Oh, it's in my heart. Oh, yeah, I can feel that. Oh, man, that is some judgment. That is some criticism. Okay, so what judgment, criticism, what, what belief? What belief am I holding on to right there? And contemplate and be curious. And follow the breadcrumb trail that is your emotional guidance system. 
and you will awaken to so many different beautiful layers of yourself. You'll awaken to your shame. You'll awaken to your anger, your rage, your depression, your sadness, your joy, your deep gratitude, your reverence, your honor, your bliss, your ecstasy, your neutrality, your jealousy. You'll awaken to your wholeness. Because that is you and your wholeness, my love. Now, I don't mean that you're whole if you feel all the emotions all the time. It's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that somebody who's connected to their wholeness has constantly the full spectrum of emotion. What I'm saying is when you allow yourself to connect to the different emotions, because I guarantee you felt all of the emotions, all of the human emotions you have felt in your life. All of them you have felt. So when you allow yourself to connect to all of them, to see them as beautiful expressions of being human, you reclaim a part of yourself. Oh, wait, you mean shame isn't something that I have to bury? Oh, fantastic. I can reclaim that part of myself. Oh, you mean rage isn't something I have to cast out? Oh, I can reclaim that part of myself. It's very beautiful. And what happens is you do expand your capacity, expand your empathic skills and qualities. You expand your ability to feel sensation and thus pleasure. And when you don't resist feeling some things, you don't feel them as much because <laughs> they're not persisting because you're not resisting. And you know, oh, if you do feel it, you know how to move it through your body. You know how to just allow and you feel safe. It comes down to feeling safe in emotions. Our society has been suppressing them for so long. We're not allowed to show them. We can't talk about them. We have to all just put a smile on our face and ask, how are you today? Without even caring what the other person answers. How's it going? How are you? I can't even respond to those questions anymore. There's just nothing behind them. I'm not saying that people are all insincere. That's not what I'm saying. It's just this thing that we've created. We've created this, hey, how are you? As a way to open up the conversation. But what if we did something differently? <laughs> what if we just said hi? Oh my God, then what? Well, then what do we say? What's after hi? What's after hello? It's just so funny to me. So in a world that feels unsafe in emotion, feel safe in emotion. In a world that suppresses emotion, su express your emotion. And you will be so powerful. You will be so alive. It's our aliveness. We are sensational beings. We have to allow ourselves to be sensational. We have to allow ourselves to feel and be alive. So remember a couple of things as I want to summarize this. For one, allow yourself to feel. Breathe into your body. Use your breath. Use movement. Use expression to move the energy out of your body. And you never have to point an emotion at another person like anger. You can absolutely just scream. I do that. I've taught my boys to do that. Sure, you're feeling angry. Go at it. Yell, scream. But just don't do it to your brother. Don't yell at your brother. Don't point your anger at him. But feel free to be angry. And I do it too. Express it. Get it out. Use your voice. Whatever. Beat the ground. Cry. Whatever you need to do. Express it. Breathe. 
express, move. Move it through your body. It doesn't define you. It doesn't define you. And then that's just the handling, the being present with the feeling of the emotion, right? And then asking the emotion, or if you can tell where it is in your body, you could ask that chakra, which chakra is this emotion pointing to. And ask the chakra, chakra, what belief structure is in the chakra that is eliciting this emotion? And what does that belief structure say? What does that belief say? And then you can transform it because you get to choose, my love, what you believe. You get to choose. You get to choose what you believe and thus what you create and thus what you feel. (laughs) ironically enough. So I hope this has brought some power, some empowerment to emotions. I, I hope it has allowed you to see your emotions differently. Because if you can perceive your emotions differently, you will experience your emotions differently. And then you will believe different about your emotions. And then you will create differently. Thank you so much for joining me here today. As always, I love these solo episodes. I love diving a little bit deeper with you and if you feel called to work with me you can check me out at alarasage.com you can feel free to email me info at alarasage.com if you're unsure of what i have that could help you or assist you i'm always happy to have conversations around can i help you And if I can, what does that look like? As I truly desire to serve from a place of love for the higher good of all. So I will speak to you next Tuesday. And this Thursday, we'll have another wonderful guest episode. As always, I love you all so very much. Thank you for being a part of the Ecstatic Woman podcast as you experience each new day. We want you to feel that you are capable of tapping into your inner wisdom and living your life ecstatically. If you want to be invited back to the next episode, just subscribe to our podcast. And if you need more information in the meantime, go to alarasage.com.